Hi everyone, and welcome to AutoCAD. My name is Ari, and I'm an AutoCAD professional with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to use the fillet, chamfer, and blend curve functions. We can find our functions by going to the Home tab and then going to our Modify panel. And here's the fillet command. We can click on the drop-down next to it, and we'll see chamfer and blend curves are right here. Let's use fillet first. Initially, we can select an object and use the fillet. We do have many options in our command line, but we'll go over them one by one. First, let's use the command in its default form. So we're going to select some individual lines. I have some right here. So I'm going to use this one first. And then I could click on the next one, but nothing will happen. And that's because my radius by default is set to zero. And you'll see that the radius option is right here, and we can change that. You can leave it at zero if you need to actually take a curve and make it straight. So for example, I'm going to use the command one more time, and I'm going to use this line and then select this line. Before I click on that line, I can already see a preview of what's going to happen. And right now, I can see that a couple of settings have been toggled on. Firstly, my radius is set to zero, so I'm going to get a nice line at 90 degrees. And secondly, I'm not trimming any lines in between. So that means that my trim toggle is set to off right now. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So if I click on this line, now the command is done, and I can see that I have this nice 90 degree angle right here. I'm going to press the undo key, and we're going to go and use that one more time. This time, we're going to click on our first line. Now we have the option to specify our radius, so I'm going to press the R key. This is the quickest way to do it. And then press Enter. And now I can type in any number that I want, and I can specify my radius. For example, I'm just going to type in 5 for 5 units, and then press Enter. Now, if I mouse over any line that is not parallel to this line, for example, if I mouse over this one here, you'll see that a little symbol has appeared in the upper right that says that I can't really fillet, and I can see the text on the bottom right of my cursor is saying that. But if I go to a line that's not parallel, now we can see a little preview of what's going to happen, and it's essentially going to get rid of the corner and make it a nice rounded edge. So if I click on this line, now we've successfully filleted this edge. Let's use the command again, and this time we'll use our command line and see our options. We can select polyline, which allows us to fillet an entire polyline all at the same time. So this happens to be a polyline down here, and if I mouse over it, you'll see that the edges that are not at the same radius will be filleted. So we have two edges, one right here and one right here, and if we click on our polyline, they're both filleted. This one was already made at the same radius, so it didn't change. So it's a really quick way to take an entire segment that's one polyline and change it without having to click on the line over and over again, or use the command multiple times, or even use the multiple option, which we'll talk about very soon. Let's use the command one more time. And in the command line, we could specify a radius if we needed to, but usually we do that when we're in the middle of the command, either in polyline mode or in regular mode. So toggling this option here isn't really necessary. Now let's look at the trim option. This is essentially a toggle, and we can choose between trimming or not trimming when we use the fillet tool. If I move my mouse away from the command line, the trim options appear, and then I can click on my screen and I can essentially move them anywhere I want, just like this. Now I can choose trim or no trim here. I could also type the T key for trim or type the N key for not trimming. For now, we're going to leave it on trim, and I'm going to demonstrate how it works. I'll select my first segment. Our radius is still set to 5, and this curve is also set to 5. As you can see here, if you select a curve with a similar radius, this happens, which is a bit odd. And we can already see that the trim command is in use. What it does is, is it deletes any segments that are essentially connected to the next segment. So in this case, it'll actually delete the previous segment that we just selected if we were to choose this segment right here. So instead, we're going to use this segment. First, let's change our radius. I'm going to type the R key and then press Enter. And then I can change it from 5 to, for example, let's make it larger. So we're going to make it at 10. And now, if I move my mouse over this segment, we can see that the previous segments are essentially going to be deleted or trimmed, and our new radius will be joined between the two segments just like this. Now, let's set our radius to something different. We're going to make it smaller than 5 than what it is currently. So we'll set it to 2, for example. And now, when we do this, there is no need to trim because the radius is smaller, so it bypasses any other segments, and it just basically connects the two and 
sets it so that they can connect and have this new radius here. So if I was to click on here, this old radius is still here. Even though trim is turned on, it technically is not related to the other segments. That's also why it didn't get deleted when we made the radius larger. So let's press the undo key and let's try that one more time. Let's use the fillet command again. And this time we're going to go back to trim. Let's make sure that our trim is turned on and we're going to turn one of our corners back into a 90 degree corner. So I'm going to type R for radius, turn it into a zero radius. Let's use this segment and this segment. And just for demonstration purposes, I'll delete this segment. So let's use fillet one more time. We're going to type radius this time. We'll change it back to five. And now because trim is turned on, if I was to select this segment and the next one, it will delete the corner itself. So that's another way that the trim command essentially works. And this is a better way to visualize it when you have your two segments actually connected to each other instead of having a segment such as the previous curve in the way, because that segment isn't really changed when you have trim turned on. Now, before I initiate the command, let's go back and let's use fillet one more time. And this time I'm going to use the trim command and I'm going to turn no trim on. So now trimming is turned off. So if I select the first segment and then I mouse over the second one, it'll essentially make an entirely new line and it'll leave the old corner. So if I click here, we now have the old corner here and here. So the lines have not been modified at all. So essentially a third line has been added, which was that rounded corner that we had earlier. And because our trim is turned off, we can essentially create new lines by doing it this way. Another thing we could do is we could use fillet. We can set our radius to zero, for example. And if I select this segment here and this one, we can essentially see that no change happens because it will not join the lines together. Essentially, these lines are still separate from each other. If they were touching, then we would see the change that we saw here. So that's how you can tell which trim option that you're using. Let's use the fillet tool again, and let's look at the last function in the command line, multiple. This allows us to use this tool repeatedly without having to reselect it after using it once. So first, let's change our trim setting back to trim, and let's change our radius from 0 to 10. And now let's use the tool on this segment to this one, for example. It's going to trim and get rid of all extra segments. And now the command is still active. So I can continue to do it again, for example, with either this line or this line here. Let's use this one. And now if we're finished, we can then press the enter key. This is the end of part one of our series. Part two will focus on the chamfer command.